Okay, so today we are gonna be building a fry system for my new fish rooms. This is a little bit of a niche kind of build, but anyone who wants to breed fish, I'd highly, highly recommend you make one of these. So when it comes to raising up our fry, normally a lot of people like to use things like hang on breeder boxes, you know, German breeder rings, and those things work really, really well. But one of these systems is pretty affordable and it's gonna help you so much with your breeding. So like raising cichlids, I use this system for raising a lot of like angelfish, rams. This does work for whiptails, catfish, things like that. I really, really like to raise them up in a system like this. So I haven't found the system to work great with really, really tiny fry. Things like rainbow fish and danio fry and things like that, they're too small, but this works really good for like bigger fry, so cichlids. Rams are probably the smallest fry I'd go in this system. But anyways, what we're gonna need is a fish tank, obviously, uh, and a few other materials which I'm gonna go through right now. So I've made one of these before. This is an idea that's taken from Dean, from Dean's Fish Room. I've used it in my last fish room and today I'm going to be trying to make it as clean and neat as possible because Dean's looks really, really neat and I'm kind of a bit jealous that mine was really, really sketchy in the last room. So yeah, I've got a bunch of things here. I've got these clear containers which I'm going to be using as the trays for raising the fry up. The way the system works is each container has an inlet with fresh water going into it and an airline. So it's constantly bubbling at the surface and there's constantly fresh water going around and it makes the water really, really clean for the fry to grow quick to survive and it works really, really well. I've also got some pumps here. These are 40 bucks each at Bunnings. These will work perfectly fine. They're just like a medium sized pump. Doesn't matter too much. And to do this, I'm gonna be using irrigation line. So a lot of people would use like PVC and things like that, but I've found that irrigation works really, really well. It does get drips here and there, but this should work okay for what we wanna do. And here in Australia, there's actually not that many materials compared to like if you went to a Home Depot in the States. So it's not easy to find stuff and this is the best that we've got. What we're gonna do is start building it and then I'll kind of walk through the steps that I'm taking at each part. So there's like gonna be like a few main parts and I'll show you the system at the end and yeah. Okay, so we started off the build by taking some measurements on that top beam for where we were going to put some of our pipe. So we have to put our air pipe up here and also our water pipe. And for this we're using just some irrigation tubing. This is some 13mm and you'll just find this in your irrigation aisle in your hardware store where they have all the flower bed stuff. I then started cutting the pieces of this to size and screwing them in place. I just used a cheap little irrigation bracket to attach these, nothing special and it seems to do the job pretty well. So for the pipe running across the tanks, I used flexi tube, but you can see here I'm adding a rigid piece of tubing to attach the water pump. This just helps to keep it really organized and the rigid tube won't move in the aquarium, so it works out really well. I then had to decide the easiest way to keep my airline tubing organized. And because of the way the stands were built, I had to drill a few holes to run the pipe through to keep it as organized and neat as possible. After this, it was time to start working on the actual containers themselves. So you can see here, I've got some marine grade bolts. These are the M5 and they're 75 millimeters long. Now this is obviously gonna be different for everyone because their tank's gonna be a different size. So make sure you go and do your measurements before you just buy the same thing as me, but they have to be marine grade, otherwise they will corrode. To attach these, I used a five millimeter drill bit and drilled four holes, one in each corner of the container. And then ran the bolt through, as you can see. I then drilled a 15 mm hole in the back of the container for where the water is going to escape from the container. I bought two different sizes of containers. On the big containers I drilled two holes and on the little containers I only drilled one. These do end up getting clogged after a little bit of time which is a flaw in the design but as long as you stay on top of your cleaning this shouldn't be a problem but having two just gives you a bit of insurance that if one gets clogged the other one will still let water pass through and you won't flood your whole fry system with little baby fish. Once I'd finished drilling all the holes in all the containers, 
I took them outside and gave them a coat of some white spray paint. I just used a prime and paint for this. It will end up chipping over time, but I think if you get like cryo infusion in America, that works well. But here in Australia, I just use the squirts. That's what it's called. It sounds really weird, but it's just called squirts paint. It's a $5 can of paint and it works perfectly fine. So I just gave all the containers a coat of this to make them look organized and so that I could see all the fry in the containers really easily. This next stage was a bit of a pain in the ass and this was creating the sponges to cover up the overflows of the box. So to do this, you can see here I've marked out some holes and I have to basically cut little round pieces of sponge to do this. There's probably a much better way to do this, but I found making a circular piece of sponge to look the best and to cover up that hole really, really well. In the past room, I tried to etch out a rectangular hole and on some of the boxes, I actually had fries slipping through. So this was the easiest way for me to do this and probably the easiest way for you guys to do it as well. The most important thing with your overflow sponge is to cut the groove like you can see me doing here. Don't cut all the way through, just cut like a little lip around the middle of the sponge so you can slide it through the hole and it'll just stay in place. After this, I went through and added all our little micro taps onto our PVC pipe for the air and the water outlets. When doing this, I discovered that the placement of my pipe wasn't perfect and I actually ended up pulling the water pipe out and moving it to the front of the stand so that I have the water coming in through the front and pushing all the fry to the back and it's the easiest way to access the water and the dripping from the front so I don't have to reach over to the back and it just looked the best so what I did was I moved this pipe to the front then we had to make all the little airline tubing taps and micro tubes for all the inlets to all the containers and then I put some PVC piping along the middle of the stand And then I found these mounting zip ties, which I used for mounting the airline tubing over the top of the box to give it the neatest look and the best positioning so that it wasn't touching the bottom of the container, it was sitting right on the water level and I could also adjust the flow rate of the air coming into the box. Okay, so I really quickly want to interrupt this video to let you guys know that my new shop is going to be open on the 30th of September here in Brisbane in Yorongpilly. The address is J1241 Station Road, Rongpilly. We're going to be doing a soft opening to start off with. So we're just going to be opening the doors, seeing who comes through and letting you guys buy some of the fish and having a look at what we've done here. I'm super excited to let you guys see it all. We will be doing like a grand opening like a few weeks down the line once we've kind of found our feet a little bit. But to start with, we're just opening the doors and seeing who comes. So we're going to be open on the 30th. We're going to be open that whole weekend on Friday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Saturday 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Sunday on 10 till 2 p.m. I really need you guys to come support us. We're kind of, you know, running low on money after all this expansion. So any support would be greatly appreciated. Even if you just come in and have a look and don't buy anything, I'd still appreciate you guys coming and seeing it. We're gonna have some really cool fish in here and what you're looking at behind me right now isn't the finished shop. By the time you see it, it'll be all cleaned up and there'll be fish in all the tanks and they'll all be healthy and quarantined and all that stuff. So. I'm really, really excited to finally have this done. And it's not done yet, but just at least have the doors open and finally meet some of you guys. So, sorry to interrupt this video. I normally don't make segments like this in videos or ads, but I thought it's definitely necessary to let you guys know that we're gonna be open. So back to the video. After this, the system is pretty much done. To finish it off, I did add two little LED floodlights. These are about 20 bucks each to the middle of each of the tanks just to light the system up so that we could see everything really clearly. At some point, I will probably put like another light across the top of these tanks, but for now, this will work great for us seeing all the baby fish. And something I found to be really important with these fry systems is to keep your lights on 24 seven. This way you can optimize the feeding. And for me, what I like to do is attach my auto feeding system to these containers. It works really, really well, and I'll be making a video on that in the future. But keeping the lights on 24 seven means you get optimal growth, and it means the fish get onto that hardier stage quicker because they're getting fed constantly.
Okay, and so here you can see we have the finished product. So here's the fry system, semi-complete. We've got water in the system and we've got all of our water intakes pumping water into the system. We don't have the air on yet because I have to finish setting that up and we also don't have the sponge filter on because this side's not linked up yet. So we've got to finish up a few things, but this is basically the fry system. So it would be functional. I'm probably going to put some rams in here very soon and see how they go after set up an auto feeding system, but that'll work out okay, hopefully. But this is how you basically do this. So. I think over time I might make a few tweaks, like I might change out this sprinkler head for some micro jets, we'll see. But other than that, I think the system should do the job really well and it turned out pretty neat. So thank you so much for watching this video guys, I really do appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next one.